Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you and uh, speaking to you about my experience of buying a property from an auction. So this property, I bought it in an auction. Uh, we refab this property. Uh, we refinanced it and we're renting it out as an Airbnb now. But in this video, it should be more like a tutorial uh, sharing my experiences uh, for you to actually uh, probably do the same thing if you're interested in buying a property from an auction. Okay, let's go through it. So yeah, so the first things first uh, was I saw this property on uh, right move. Uh, this property was going for 70k uh, on right move. It's in an area where I invest. This is Coventry. So I've got properties in Coventry and I was like, oh, that's a nice property and it's going for 70k. Uh, when I went through it and I saw, oh, this is actually uh, an auction property. So it's marketed by an auction. Contacted the auction house, uh, booked a viewing. So I didn't personally go to the viewing. Um, I instructed someone to go to the viewing. Uh, they viewed the property on my behalf. Uh, they saw the things which I wanted, the center videos and everything. Because I live in a different city. I live in Glasgow and I didn't want to go to uh, Coventry just to see a property, you know. So that's why I instructed someone. Because I've bought properties in the past. So I can do that because I know what exactly to look out for. So when I contacted the auction house, we booked the viewing, uh, they went for the viewing. And um, in parallel to them going for the viewing, I was doing my numbers to see, okay, if uh, we get this property at such and such a price, because it's an auction property, uh, what's our final bid? So I based all my numbers on my final bid. You know, yes, the property is advertised at uh, 70K, but that's not what it's going to go for uh, on the auction day. So I looked through the uh, the auction legal pack. So I went through everything uh, to find out, like just to look for things which are important, you know, to look for caveats, to look for things which uh, might uh, come back and bite you, you know. So it's, it's very, very important. If it's your first time buying a property from an auction, it's important if you haven't gone through this uh, process before, is you go to a solicitor who's done auction properties and they will give you guidance and on how, what to look for inside a legal pack, etc. But I just went through this uh, with uh, a friend who's bought loads of properties from auctions and uh, I just used my friend as a consultant, so bouncing things uh, back and forth ideas with them because it was my first time buying an auction. Yes, I previously bought other properties, but it wasn't an auction condition because when you're buying an auction, it's a different ball game. It's a totally different ball game, and a lot of people uh, uh, get bent, you know, because they don't do their due diligence uh, before the auction. So we seen this property, uh, viewed it, uh, went through the legal pack, and uh, we're happy with it. Uh, we're happy with the numbers we're getting. So advertise at seventy k, uh, the last price uh, which we want, which we're gonna pay for this property was a uh, hundred and ten. And I base that on uh, on the comparables of the the properties in that certain area. So I knew like if we buy this property for 110, we renovate it uh, for 50 to 60k. Uh, we've added value to the property. Uh, the end value of this property on a conserv conservative side would be around uh, 230 mark. You know this is being conservative. So that's me. That means with with that would have pulled out uh, all our money. Uh, back from this deal, you know. But in terms of the the spec of the refab, I knew from looking at the property, it was totally distressed. So I needed to revamp the refab, like to actually boost it to make it like nice spec. Let's speak about the B, the buying side, you know. So so the buying side, which is, it was a new experience for me. Uh, going through an auction, it's. It's daunting, trust me. It's uh, nail biting, so you're nail biting everything, you know, and uh, nail wrecking. Let me say, so went uh, to the auction. Uh, I did it online. I didn't. I didn't want to be in the room because I didn't want to travel to England and I uh, don't actually uh, get the property. So everything was online. Uh, this bid came in, so with the property they start, you know, they start calling uh, the 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 lots and uh, the plots which are. Uh, on the on that day, so mine was uh, I think yeah, lot seven. Yeah, I remember lot seven. So he came up to lot seven, now and I'm shaking. I'm like, damn. 
Am I going to get this property? Will it go? But when it comes to that, it's very, very important to remain calm and to remain disciplined. So I was looking at my spreadsheet and my spreadsheet was telling me, Tabo, the numbers are 110. You can't go above 110. So he started the beating, you know, it's, all it starts. And those auction uh, house people, you know, the people who actually uh, conduct the auction, they're very good, you know. You know, they started oh, 170K the property is going for, you know, like, you know, you know, that commentary, like, like a horse racing, oh, the property is going for 70K, it's now 80K, it's now 90K. I was like, damn, and it was fast. The whole process was very, very fast. And I was like, oh my God. So at 95K, I'm, I'm still not engaged. I'm still not, I haven't put my first bid in. It's a 95K now. Then it goes to, uh, it goes once, it goes twice. So someone almost got it at 95K. But I was like, okay, I'll put my bid in. It went to 97, uh, 97.5. So it was now going in increments of um, uh, two, 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 two and a half. So then after 97 and a half, it went to, to 100K. Yeah, 100K. It was on 100K. So it looked like there were now two bidders, me and someone else. Then uh, uh, they went for 100 and uh, uh, 102, 500. So when they went for 102, 500, I went for uh, 105. You know, it was on 105. I think for some reason... They they just said nah okay cool I'm 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 gonna give up on this I'm gonna stop fighting for this property, uh the guy said one of five going once, one of five going twice, one of five bam, <laughs> that was me and this was my heart, uh beating fast thumping fast and uh but yeah so I won this property at uh, one of five, and that was good because uh it was five k below. <laughs> Below my ceiling price, because if it if it, if it had gone above uh, 110, I was gonna stop bidding and walk away. Because you gotta revert back to the numbers, look at the numbers, what the numbers are telling you. So that was my experience on the buying side, like in the actual auction room, you know. But it didn't finish there, because after that, I had to pay. Uh, listen to these numbers: 10% uh, uh, on the day. 10% deposit, so obviously that's non-refundable. So if I pull out of that, I'm not going to get that 10%, etc. And the way like some auction fees and uh, buyer's premium, which I think came about to uh, 3% of the uh, total uh, uh, property valuation, uh, which was one of five. So I think all in all on that night, uh, I left about 14, 14K uh, to the auction house. So once obviously that's done, uh, it's it's late at night. It was an evening property uh, auction. I text my broker. I'm like, "Hey, bro, I want to a property at an auction. I need a bridge in two weeks because I know like the terms are 28 days, but I gave him two weeks. I was like, I need a bridge in two, in in two weeks. And uh, so my broker has got all my paperwork and all that. So I just said I'll send you uh, every detail about this property. Send it to my broker. Uh, they saw it, and uh, in parallel, I need a solicitor. So I've got a solicitor. So all these people, I I pre pre warned them to say I'm going to an auction, you know, and uh, this is the property I'm I'm bidding for, and I'm telling you this is my power team. They've got my details already. I've done deals with them, like the other five properties uh, with which which I've bought. I've used the same people. So they, they know how I work and I know how they work. So I sp spoke to my solicitor and I said, oh yeah, by the way, we've won this property. And you know, uh, with the auction house, you give your solicitor details to them, etc. And they start like contacting them, uh, sending all the legal information. And it's now like your solicitor and the seller solicitor, they start communicating now. But however, on that process, the most important thing you need to know everyone needs to know is we've got 28 days so from from the next day the clock was ticking you know 28 days not 28 working days actually 28 calendar days so it the clock was ticking so this was like um october yeah so we're completing 
uh, due to complete uh, end of October, no, first week of uh, November, that was the 28 days. So, yeah, first week of November, uh, we're set to complete. So, yeah, so when the solicitors and my brokers uh, were going through all this, I was in, in parallel at the background. I was looking for a build team uh, to actually uh, give them the vision of, of the the project, what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to uh, uh, add value and how I'm trying to do this, you know. So I liaised with a few builders, and but there's one builder which uh, my friend had worked with uh, before, but I had worked with the same builder uh, like on smaller projects, but it wasn't like a, a full refurb. So I told the builder about the property. Uh, we created a statement of works, like scope of works, which uh, gives every detail uh, of the property and what needs to be done when it needs to be done. So he knew uh, all about this. And uh, the next thing uh, was uh, to go through the process and uh, wait for day 28. So the legal stuff was going well. Uh, the bridging, for me to get the bridging, uh, it was going well. I actually had uh, two bridging loans, uh, which had accepted me, so on the table. And uh, we chose uh, the other one uh, because it was what? Uh, the interest rates uh, were low and it was a good deal. Uh, for me to, to choose that uh, bridging loan. So, yeah, uh, after 28 days, we actually closed and completed on the deal. It was very, very nerve-wracking, but I'm glad I went through that process and uh, managed to complete that. So the most important lessons which I learned here uh, was how important it is to, to have a power team. So, like, have your broker, your solicitor, and uh, your builders uh, ready. And uh, the other most important uh, lesson uh, which I learned uh, going through yeah, is actually learned this from the consultant friend who was telling me the most important document is the document which is not there. Uh, first of all, I didn't understand what you're saying, but it's like a legal pack can have everything, but like other legal packs miss documents. You know, so if you've never gone through a legal pack, you will not know what's supposed to be in a legal pack because you can go through all those documents and everything is fine. But what's missing? You know, so luckily enough, for our uh, legal pack, everything was there. But the only issue with the property uh, was something called uh, a flying freehold. And obviously, close to the property as well, there are commercial uh, properties, etc. So what this means is like, uh, to, in, when it comes to landing, so other landers, they don't like this. They don't have an appetite for it. So you just get uh, less and less landers in the market because of these uh, situations. So, I mean, I can go on and on and on about this, but this was like my experience of uh, uh, buying this property uh, from an auction. So with this property, uh, we've bought it, uh, we finished uh, refabbing it, and it's actually on the market today right now as an airbnb and uh, we're just going through uh the second stage of refinancing it because it's in a bridge so we can actually refinance it straight away and pull out some equity i will do another update video when of when the refinance comes out but you can see obviously around this video you can see the before and after of, uh, of of this property. And I'll also do you like a walkthrough video of me actually being in the property and walking around, talking to say, this is the bedroom, this is this, this is that uh, throughout this property. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, but by the way, before you go, I've got a 10 day Airbnb crash course. So with this 10 day Airbnb crash course, I will teach you how to get your first Airbnb property and it's a very, very small investment of uh, 100 pounds. So click on the link uh, in the description or in the comment section and uh, join the group. And you will learn from someone who's actually bought six properties uh, in, in addition to this one, which was from an auction uh, using various methods. And also in parallel to that, I have list six properties uh, from landlords as well, uh, which is a strategy which is commonly known as rent to rent or Airbnb arbitrage. So I can teach you uh, both those strategies. And yes, so click on the description before below and I will see you on the inside. Thank you so much. Bye.